guys and gals. Welcome to the Oxford Holy Club, a place where we ready ourselves to give an answer for the hope that's in us. We will also try to answer your questions, random questions from the interwebs, and have some fun too. So put some seatbelts on your ears because we're in for a wild ride. Well, hello, Oxford Holy Club. My name is Brad Silliker. Welcome to episode 137 entitled Opinions. Everybody's got them. Perceptions and switches. Uh, I am one of your hosts tonight. We'll see how many we have, but we definitely have Andrew Beckwith. Hey, Andrew, how are you? And I'm like half of one. What? Oh, look, I have Lucas is entering the waiting room. Let's should we keep him in a holding pattern? Oh, shoot. I clicked too fast. There he is. There's our boy. Welcome to the podcast. 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 <laughs> Welcome. It's good to be here. That's nice to have you here. How's the internet back where you are? Well, it hasn't been good this evening, but hopefully that reset does the trick for us. Well, we're glad that you're here. I'm having uh, internet. Are you issues getting something from well. the newsroom there, Lucas? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was turning my earbuds on. They it, the whole setup just shut down on me. So. Seeing if I can fix you, it. But it, you listen, in in your defense, it's not like we do this every week. You know, like if it was a recurring thing that you had to be prepped for, I would, I, you know, I'd I'd throw you under the bus. But get, we do I'll, this so sporadically I'll get on the and random. And give them a stern talking to about you, my internet. Yeah, w- and make sure that you reference our podcast. Listen, you're not paying for backup internet. <laughs> yeah. I got two lines coming in my house. Listen, either his headphones died or he really didn't find that one funny. <laughs> hey Lucas. Lucas? Hello. Sorry my uh my earbuds are not working for me. Oh thank heavens. I put you on my regular speaker. Okay, we we really oh, my soul. We we really thought that Andrew's joke really fell flat with you. We were afraid that we he might have offended because you were oh, like Oh no, I didn't hear. I mean, I might be once I go back and listen to it, but I haven't heard it yet. I'm I glad you remember what it was. I'm glad uh, I remember. You asked him if he was paying for backup internet, (laughs) which I thought was just the best. That's a good zinger. I'm sorry I gave you the deadpan face. Bazinga. You Uh, totally bazinged me. All right. Well, we, uh, I also understand like, well, let's, let's just get into this. All right. Welcome to the episode 137. Uh, we're glad that you're here. My power has flickered twice since the countdown video started. So if all of a sudden we're just off the air, uh, that's why definitely not because of other reasons and stuff like that. Hey, my mouse. Facebook shut us down. Facebook just shut us down. But uh, when you contact monetized, when you contact Bella Lyon, will you please make reference to our podcast as to why you're calling? You don't understand. You don't know who I am. I'm one third of the hosts of the Oxford Holy Club podcast. And this is untenable. I cannot have this type of internet service. It will not stand. It will. So I think if you drop some names, start with Andrew. Mm-hmm. Then work your way mm-hmm. to me, because uh, if it doesn't happen with Andrew, actually, just drop Andrew's name. That that should get it done. All That's right, because I because I pay for two internets from them. <laughs> <laughs> just just to be in the safe side, um, folks. If you want to find out more about us, you can just head on over to our website, www.naspei. Nope, www.oxfordholyclub.com. <laughs> Listen, I do this two times a week, and I mix them up more than I care to admit. Oh dear. Oxfordholyclub.com. And from there, you can find out all that you would like to know. But we are here every Tuesday night on Facebook. We're live at 9 p.m. And I'm going to talk a little bit about maybe uh, upgrading or leveling up the podcast. And we'll see what you guys think about that. But I'll share that in my catching up. Let's. Did you tell the listening audience that I'm at 37% battery with no recourse? No. All right. We're going. To... Oh, my word. You have, you have a cell phone, don't you? <laughs> Get on that cell phone if you're... Okay, how about a tiebreaker? Andrew, let's go to a tiebreaker. From Jason. Hey, Jason. Thanks for watching. My friends Erica, Bill, and Michael have an ongoing group text chat. Ah, the group text chat. Gotta love it. Yep. In early June of this year, Michael asked the group to settle a bet as to whether a cheesecake is a cake or a pie. I know what you're thinking, but that's not the dispute. (laughs) 
Uh, Bill and I gave our opinions and a vigorous debate ensued. Disappointingly, Erica remained silent throughout the exchange. Despite gentle, periodic reminders that she should take a stand, she's taken the cowardly approach and has not divulged her opinion. Recently, a dispute arose as to whether a corndog is a tamale, and yet again, she failed to reveal a point of view. Honestly, is honesty is an important pillar of friendship, and I worry that what affected... I worry what effect can t- Wow, I'm really... Hi, really Barb. Just, hey, Scott. Thanks for liking the stream. Uh, continued silence will have on a group of dynamic. I'm asking you to order Erica to reveal her true opinions on these and future dumb disputes and disagreements. I really just want to argue about the cheesecake thing and the... Okay. Uh, corn dog thing. <laughs> that was my favorite part, too. <laughs> but you and I, well, the three of us, we have a group chat, and we don't generally get into heated conversations. It's more like, hey, we video game in. Hey podcast is coming hey how's everyone doing i feel like if we had a question like this we'd want to save it for the podcast that's probably why so, so yeah. the, oh so the answer to this question is start a podcast <laughs> i'm down with that I'm, everything J- jason i'm down like listen if you want to know what to, what's up and how to make it happen call me um we'll, we'll get you hooked up on the podcast and then you get your friends trick them to go on the podcast and then throw down <laughs> to me, that's the best way to settle disputes like that. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. I think that, uh, like, I don't think she should have to vote, but I think it would be good for her to vote. You know what I mean? Like, maybe she's just super anti-conflict, but I, uh, you know, a few years ago, I thought, I need to get a little bit better at conflicts. I just don't like conflict. So I thought... I started like some like immersion therapy where I would just disagree with people on stupid things just to practice disagreeing with people. It's like, Oh, I love red, you know, jelly beans. I'm like, no, actually I'm more of a blue jelly bean fan. I think red are kind of inferior. Uh, you know, just, if you like just them, you're practice dumb. disagreeing. I'm so, I'm sorry. I, I saw uh, Scott Layton post something and it took my attention. I really do apologize in all honesty. Did you I say, was listening. did you say that you did that or you're recommending they do that? Well, I've done that. And I, I think I you've think, become argumentative on purpose just to practice being no, argumentative, not argumentative. I am. I am taking conflicts, opportunities to participate in conflict. Um, you know, I'm working up a gradual resistance like an like a like a flu shot, you know, little little things about little things, because normally I've had people tell me stuff that I know for sure is wrong. And I just agree with them because I don't really feel like arguing with them about it. What if our military uh, took the type of approach you're taking to conflict? <laughs> Guys, I think this would be a good one just to practice. Let's get a practice war in. Just, practice so then when war. the big one comes, we're ready. Oh, they the do do pra- right? practice wars. What do. Immersion therapy. <laughs> yeah, okay. I suppose live fire training. That's what, that's what you were in, I suppose. <laughs> that's right. I mean, the real question here is cheesecake, cake, or pie. All right, so to, to Jason, do we are, are you guys in agreement with me? Start a podcast, deal with it there. Uh, I just think you move on with your life, and if she doesn't want to share an opinion, you <sighs> just don't share your Man, opinion. I want her to share. <laughs> All right. Well, I think the answer to that one is very simple, and that it's neither. Like it's it's like saying chicken or it's chicken or fish. Flan. Is it beef? You know, like it's it's neither of those things. It's its own weird. But thing. it's called cheesecake. Yes. Well, okay. Yes. Let's let's find some common ground because this is this is how <laughs> conflict is averted. I know Lucas wants to throw down. Can can we all agree that cheesecake is a dessert? Yes. Yeah. All right. And the there term. We, I feel closer to you now. I, I I think we can come to some kind of amicable agreement with this now. This is good. Uh, um, some, what defines a cake? Somebody get HR on the phone. Um, can't be round because that that describes both. Okay. Can't be sweet. That describes both. Although, you know, there could be like chicken pot pie. Um, icing? icing. But is it, is it, it's not really an icing because it's, it's cream cheese. So like, do we really need No, but I'm saying, I'm saying does icing oh. define it being a cake? Is it a cake without icing? Oh yeah. I prefer my cakes uh, au natural. Well, cake. Yes, of course. Of course you do. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> cakes. I, plain, I, plain like your hot dogs. Plain vanilla, I, no icing. But but Lucas, you're I I know we're ripping on you, but you're right, and that in it in and of itself is cake. Mm-hmm. But cheesecake is I don't think cheesecake is cake in that de- in that definition because it's not it's it's just not. It's not cakey. It's not cakey. 
it's cream cheesy because that's what it's supposed no, to be. Oh, I disagree. I mean, I there's different Barb kinds of cheesecake. Squares. Okay. And I think that's true. Barb, I like that idea. It's really more of a, it's closer to squares than either of these other two. The, the, I think the only reason that we're calling it a cake is because we cut it like cake, perhaps. But don't you cut, cut it like pie a pie? The same way? Shoot. <laughs> Wait, you, you guys have to try my apple cake. It's real good. <laughs> this now, is I have one time made cake out of eggs. No, sorry, not out of eggs, out of mayonnaise, because we didn't have eggs. And apparently you can use mayonnaise. Um, that is so true. it was not a traditional material, but it was still a cake. But I, I still thought of it as a cake because it was had a cakey texture to it. So, but doesn't some cheesecake have a cakey te texture? Turns out cheesecake was a pudding all along. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had. I don't now. To be fair, I do not eat a lot of cheesecake. I chocolate cheesecake, and I've seen the rest. That's about it. Now, I think like one of those like no bake cheesecakes. That's more like a pie to me. Um, but then I, like a thicker cheesecake, like a chocolate cheesecake, to me that's kind of closer to cake. So I think it really it's a spectrum the cake pie spectrum and the different versions of cheesecake can follow along it listen as i just oh. uh, no i am not gonna what is her name i'm not gonna pull an erica i will not remain silent on this issue <laughs> i i cannot get on board i know we call it cheesecake it to me based on the cheesecakes that i've eaten i would not call them cakes in in the truest form uh, they're definitely dessert don't forget we're all in agreement on that Agreed. That unites us. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm gonna recant my. Uh, no, <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> more of an appetizer. I, I'm, I'm, I really don't think they're cake. I don't think they're. I think they're closer to pie. Um, but I also think there. It's like some kind of pie pudding situation that I don't have a term for. Mm -hmm. It, it just, it, it is what it is. It's its own thing. <clears throat> I think Lucas, you may have said that from the beginning. Perhaps we should have listened. I just had a revelation that I really don't care. <laughs> You're the one that wanted us to, to go here. I know. And now that we're in here and we're talking about it, He's great. It's, it tastes yummy. Well, I don't care what it is. All right. Well, then you have the power, man. All right. Um, well, I have this gavel. Uh, case closed. Right. Awesome. There you go, Jason. You're welcome. For For that. I put a catch-up slide up, Andrew. Does that mean you're going to move us along? Yeah, let's catch up, guys. I mean, it's been a, a week. Uh, you know, Brad, what you been up to? Well, I'm going to go fast. Um, so we we started our what we call Phase 3 for the Sherwood Church here, which was fully broadcasting from the sanctuary. And we like we've been doing tech rehearsals for months we've been doing all this stuff we had like everybody was on their game the service was phenomenal and part way through the service because i'm monitoring facebook's chat youtube's chat we have a chat uh, an in-house chat through an app chat chat the, the chat chat the chit chat and then um we use something called planning center um services and so in that all of our leaders everybody that's involved in the back end and making the service happen are all in a group chat where we're communicating um if something's going wrong or you know anything like that so anyway all of a sudden i get messages or messages are flying that um the live stream audio is terrible and i'm up front there's nothing i can do about it um so anyway uh, like what I what I started seeing in chat was people are saying like it's it's uh, staticky all this kind of stuff which means a hardware issue, but it turns out after going back and listening to it, it was awful. And if anybody here was watching, if anybody from the church, I'm so sorry that that was unpleasant. And uh, 25 people. I was I mean, watching. It's not like you do it the same time every week, Brad. I mean, it's not like it's a regular scheduled thing. So how could it go wrong? I don't understand. <laughs> I was watching and I almost became not a Christian because it was so <laughs> distracting. Okay. So uh, long, the long story short is this is in the program that we use to live stream uh, because we're live streaming to YouTube and Facebook and they want different resolutions. They want diff all kinds of different things. You need to let the program do its magic and send those. But I, we were, we had one option not clicked and it was sending one thing everywhere um, and, and some of the settings just weren't, weren't optimized properly. We were sending 60 frames per second when our camera doesn't even do that. 
Um, so like, what's the point of sending 60 frames? You know, you send 29.5. Anyway, all, all that to say, basically what happened was um, it just, the frames just kept dropping and there just, it was just, it was like trying to shove everything through this tiny hole and uh, uh, it just went awful. Anyway, that's fixed. But that was like our first one in. It was, and the service was phenomenal in the sanctuary. And I felt so bad for the 25 people that still hung on and watched through and, 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 and it sounded like that. Treasures in heaven, baby. Well, someone commented. They were like, we really had to pay close attention to the message this week, <laughs> which, which was awesome. Um, the other thing for me, there was, you know, I'm, I'm constantly on the grind trying to get that switch time in, make, you know, good use of our Nintendo switch. And I just, I beat the super or the, uh, the NES Nintendo Mario, the original Mario. I mean, I've played it lots before, but it's been, I don't know, 20 years since I sat down and just went each level the whole way through. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Jaden and I had a, a guy's night. Have you, have you done well? Guys, night. Mandy was going out with with friends for the evening. Um, Harmony was at a friend's birthday party for the night, and Jaden and I were like, "We are gonna watch Jurassic Park too. It's going to be amazing." We're guys, gonna, night. Guys, night. Seven thirty rolls around, and and Jaden's wiped. He's tired, so I put him to bed. <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, well my night now what shall i do so i lay in bed and that was a mistake i fell asleep Always. so <laughs> uh I, yeah that was what it was anyway you so were that, so rested the next day i bet i you know what i felt great but here's here's what i here's what we've talked about this before about the podcast i mentioned at the beginning about leveling up facebook's got this thing called the level up program where if you meet certain requirements you get into this program and then you can stream at a higher quality. There's more things that you can do to engage with the audience, stuff like that. And we are only two, uh, two things short of meeting it. We have to stream video game content for at least four hours in the last 14 days. And we need to stream <laughs> video game content for two days in the last 14 days. Now, I don't think they're going to be checking really the game so much as that you're streaming. But we need to do a four-hour stream. Just put it like get a goldfish and put the camera on the goldfish and then just let it run. Okay. Uh, people will know about I'm, it. I'm just I'm thinking tomorrow like this this will be one day this stream will count and then I'm thinking mm -hmm. tomorrow just turning this on and letting something run for four hours. You guys cool with that? <laughs> Jurassic Park two. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Uh, so if you see that we're that we're streaming and there's nothing there, um, that's what's going on. I'm trying to level we're us trying up. Trying to get our checks. Just, I'm just I'm just we're just trying to be better, you know. Get good, mm -hmm. as they say. That's me. Nice. Cool, Lucas. All right. Well, I had a snow day today. First snow day of the uh, school year, which I was thinking back, and I think it might be the latest first snow day ever which I don't actually mind because it would, it, I liked having not that much snow. Like I don't snowmobile or anything like that. So I don't care about having piles and piles of snow like some people do. Uh, so yeah, it was nice. Got my work done in the morning. Was super excited for lunchtime video games with my good, good friends. Um, and not, even though they do it most days today, they did not do it for various reasons. So uh, that is all right. Uh, but it was a bit of a, a bit of a bummer. For clarity. Brad and I do it once a week on Mondays. Oh, really? <laughs> once a week on Mondays. Oh, wow. Sorry. I do I, I do it by myself throughout the week, but. Oh, I see. And yes, hey, see. aren't you streaming? What's your channel? You're on Twitch, aren't you? <laughs> no, that's right. No. Shout, shout, sh into that. shout out to Cool Breeze 86 on Twitch. Yeah, it's worth it's a watch. Close, but that's not quite it. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I did that. Um, and then, uh, last week, I mean, I probably touched on it briefly, but I had the COVID that I had, I talked about the COVID test. Last oh my week? word. No. The sentence I just heard was I had the COVID, <laughs> no, the COVID <laughs> test. So that I was, was like, after. I, I was storm stayed most of the week there. Um, well, COVID stayed, mm -hmm. but I think I had it on Tuesday. So I probably already talked to you guys about it. They're cool. So underscore blurry. breeze 86. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Underscore breeze 86. There you go. Check him out. Check him out. He's got 919 
thousand followers on YouTube. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I looked it up. He said he put out a video on YouTube. I was like, how'd you get, who did you pay to get this many followers? And he's like, I have one follower. And when I clicked in, it said one, one subscriber. But then when I went back out, it still said 919,000. So anyway, it looked good. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I had the COVID thing, uh, the COVID test and Thank all that you, you got to say it differently. Let me say that one more time. Do not have COVID. But I mean, it was a huge pain because was that a really busy week? And I was like stuck at home, you know, and no help because I'd be like, hey, do you want me to make lunches for the kids? She's like, no quarantine person. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like can't get your d- dirty possible COVID hands off our children's food. Uh, mm. So <laughs> that's not really that's haircut. appetizing. But, but anyway, but the nice thing was I didn't have to do any work uh, uh, on like household things. I still managed to get some schoolwork done, which was nice, but uh, it was a huge pain because it did set me back basically like a week. But anyhow, and then last not least, uh, Melissa is watching tonight. So a big shout out to Melissa. Hey, Mel- hey, Melissa, who does not watch all the time. So we're very excited that she's watching. Um, I'm sure she wasn't a fan of that last COVID comment, but hey, stick around. We'll redeem it, baby. All right. So, uh, Andrew, how about you? Wait, can we also, before Andrew shares, can we also send a very quick apology to Scott Layton's wife, uh, Alicia? Or is it I'll Alicia? Cheesecake. Listen, I know that we're opinionated here, but don't forget, we come together over desserts. You know, I think she, he thought your wife was scolding you because of your. No, his, pa- his passionate wife is scolding me in the background. Oh, yeah, because because she she set up earlier cheesecake it's cheese it's cake. oh yes yeah, anyway, we're just we're just glad that you're here or in the That's background right. yeah <laughs> so technically we have more view viewers anyway so uh my my week was good we kind of we got a lockdown and we could see other humans here in uh, st john area so that was good we got to hang out with my parents and stuff and uh oliver decided he wanted to skate He's never skated before. Okay, okay, and okay. Uh, so uh, we were all pretty excited to try that out. There's a there's a lake by my parents' house that I used to skate on and stuff as a kid. So we um, went down there and uh, I have skates, but they're like, they were like my dad's skates and I put them on my feet and my feet immediately feel like they're going to like crumble into <laughs> dust. It hurts so bad. Yeah. I need to buy like an actual pair of skates for me. So I put those on. He's on. He's on these skates, and he's out there for three seconds, and he's like, "I'm done," and I'm trying to be an adult who's trying to teach his child how to skate with while my as your, feet as your feet are in a vice. Yeah, just like just killing me. And I'm like, "Come on, Oliver, we'll, we're just gonna." And to be honest, I really did him dirty too because I'm not even sure if his skates were sharp. I just we just had some skates, um, so. Uh, so anyways, I, I had him on a chair and we're like, I'm trying to like push the chair and the chair kept flipping and we both fall and, uh, it was, it, it was a good experience in terms of exciting to finally get him on some skates. Um, it was not a good experience in terms of my, my pain and his, uh, will, not, willingness not to learn. So my dad's going to build one. Yeah. I'm sorry. Question for you. With, going back to your to your your study ten, have you actually filled your study ten yet? Because we've no. only filled five of those spots. No, it's it's hard, right? Because we're four people that somebody has to take on, right? Right. <laughs> Same with you. You're five people. So yeah. how do you how do you do? And you're not allowed to. We we were saving them for other zones. Yeah. Like for Moncton, but then we're, finally we clued in. Like, oh, we can't even. It no. doesn't matter. We can't see them until yellow. Yeah, we've got five so. empty spots on our roster, and I was like, I guess we probably won't fill those. Um, doc- <laughs> yeah. D- Dr. Morrison and Premier King, from my family to you, we love you. Thank you for all you do. Hey, listen, this is not uh, – man, I forget her name. can't believe I forget her name already. No, no, Brunswick, I'm not – Dr. New Brunswick doctor. I'm not blaming your, I'm not blaming your doctors. I'm yeah, just very thankful for This is for not Dr. New Brunswick doctor's fault. She's good at her job. Yeah uh anyway so it, it was fun to do that and it was fun to, to see her my parents and my sister uh has finally moved into her house after two oh, months nice. of renovations and stuff with my dad so we hung out there for a bit and stuff so that's good that's awesome that's it 
Well, guys, we are going to move into our SMORP. And uh, for those that don't know, SMORP is the way that we kind of examine scripture. And then we go down through some guided questions. It's an acronym, S-M-O-R-P. It means scripture, message, obedience, repentance, and prayer. And you'll see what those mean as we get going. But the first thing we're going to do is actually read the scripture. And uh, tonight we're looking at Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 to 21 in the NIV version. But the words will be on the screen for you dear listener. All right. It says this. <clears throat> oh boy, this is going to be difficult. Uh, it says this. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a path in the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I streams in the waste, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. It looked I there might have been a slide where I missed a couple of words um, because it put dot 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 at the end of a sentence, and I thought <laughs> that's weird. I don't remember that being there. Anyway. Uh, all right, guys, are you good with that run through on that scripture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're going to do now is go through our uh, our tool here, SMORP. And we're looking at scripture. What words or phrases or observations stood out to you in this passage? Basically, what stands out to you in this passage? Uh, and you can write it down if you like. So, gentlemen. Water in the wilderness. What's that? What? Water, water, water in the wilderness. Oh, I'm just joking. Andrew, you were saying water in the wilderness. Mm. <laughs> Deep. Yeah. Uh, for me, see, I am doing a new thing. Agreed. Um, I, I, for me, you know, forget the former things and see I'm doing a new thing. And then do you not perceive it? Though, If I was to pick those phrases, that would be where I would land. Um, do you guys have any thoughts just based on the scripture kind of on what this shows us about the nature or work of God before we get into the message part? No. Cause I, you know, um, verses 14 to 18 or 17 are all about kind of who he is and what he's done. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's uh, let's look at the. Oh, you know what? Another one, a good one is this is what the Lord says. So maybe that's uh, maybe that means it's important for us to have a little listen. All right. <laughs> All right. So, gentlemen, and if you're if you're uh, listening through the stream, feel free to let us know in chat if something stands out to you. We'd love to hear from you. Um, the message is: What do you sense the Lord saying to you in this reading? And is there a word of correction, guidance, encouragement, wisdom, or a promise? Do you have a question for God? You can write that down as well. Don't be scared if you have a question or don't know. God can handle it. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the whole, you know, streams in the wilderness thing. Um, so it says making way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot of imagery of like rivers and water and stuff like that in the Bible a lot of the time. And we live in a world that's so full of water like and like easy access to water, like turn my tap. There it is. Uh, but back in the day, you know, water was, it's, it's just as important as it is today, except for it was so much harder to get. Mm -hmm. um, and just the idea of, of, you know, when we think of God, we should think of that, you know, you get up in the middle of the night, super thirsty and you come downstairs and you get a glass of cold water and how it's like the best thing you've ever had. And it's almost like you don't know you need water until you really need it sometimes and then when you drink it like or sometimes i won't even think i need water and i'll just get a glass of water so i don't i chronically don't drink enough water and i drink that glass of water i'm like this is amazing well, why did i wait so long to drink water like i should be drinking this way more than i am and that refreshment i've and, done that too you're like, like well it's oh, oh. Uh, yeah. it's <laughs> like i've never had it before what is this new beverage it's life-giving yeah exactly so i i like that and thinking about 
God that way and having that same thirst and desire there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Andrew, my man, how about you? What, uh, what's the Lord laid on your heart with this scripture tonight? You go ahead. I'm still, that's okay. I, I feel like you're going to articulate it a lot better anyways. So, <laughs> Oh, that's dangerous. Piggyback on you. All right. Well, this is one of my favorite portions of scripture. Um, because what we're looking at here is a, a recap of who God is and what he's done. And he's done all these amazing works and how he's, he's going to, you know, bring down the Babylonians. And, and it talks about, um, where, you know, he made the path through the sea and the mighty waters. And we're talking back when, you know, the Israelites went through on dry land and, and the Egyptians were killed and God was there for his people and he moved in mighty ways. And then it said, now forget that. And don't dwell on that because I'm doing something brand new. And now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? So bear with me for a second. Um, what this scripture has said to me is this. I have moved in mighty ways in your ministry, in your life, in the past. And those are valid. And it's important to remember those and to have those. But if you're always looking for me to recreate those exactly as they were, you're going to miss the new thing that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And, and we do that. We think back to revivals, conferences, big moments where, like, I remember holding on to for the longest time when we lived in apartment 11, that was one of the times where I felt like I was spiritually growing in leaps and bounds. I had my devotional life was on, on point. You know, I was involved in the church all the time. Um, I just felt like I was doing great. And there was a dry period in between where there and where I am now. And I, for a long time was like, man, I just wish I could get back. I wish I could get back. And and while what happened was completely valid, God was trying to do a new thing and I was totally missing it because I was so fixated on the past without, you know, without really kind of putting that together. But, but now with COVID happening, this wilderness thing, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland and a way in the wilderness is direction and guidance. Uh, when we feel lost and streams in the wasteland, a wasteland to me represents death um, dryness, but streams represent life and, and freshness and newness. And so, you know, with, when COVID happened, everything that we knew shifted and changed. And I likened it to sitting in my house and all of a sudden the, I was comfortable. I knew what I had all around me. I had, all, you know, all the things that I'm used to. And then all of a sudden the walls and the ceiling, everything blew off. And I was sitting there by myself going, okay, who am I now? and what does ministry look like and all this kind of stuff for the church and for me. And God was right there saying, Hey, hey, hey I'm doing something new. And there, here's a stream. Here's a path. Just follow me. So I, again, I love this scripture uh, because God is doing something new and I need to be alert to what he's doing to make sure that I don't miss it because I can. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's so much that goes on that we don't perceive, but if we're focused in, you know, we don't miss it. So to me, that's, that's what the scripture is saying for me. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of what you just said really kind of resonates with me, especially the dwelling on the past or longing for what was, um, and just getting caught up in that. Sure. Um, and, and, uh, thinking, <laughs> thinking the best way forward is, is to go back, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know, that just really spoke to me when you said that. And, um, and, you know, I, I feel like I've struggled too in, in COVID and just finding my place with, you know, when a lot of my job has been different and different responsibilities and, but still feeling obligated to those other things and, and just not knowing what direction to go in sometimes. And, and uh, I think there's a, a happy medium there where I have to understand that, you know, we're not going back. There's a new thing happening and yeah. I have to figure out exactly what that is. But, and, and I know we're working on borrow battery time um, with you specifically, Lucas, but 17%, but th like this point is so important. Because all of us, when, when COVID hit, at least in the church, everything shifted. And the biggest thing that you would hear is like, well, when are we going back? All right. Mm. And, and we get comfortable. And, you know, what was going on for us here in, the, in our context, everything was good. 
Like there was nothing where we were like, hey, you know, we really need to change this because this isn't right. But when COVID happened, all of a sudden there was this refining that took place and an, an opportunity for change mm -hmm. that hadn't been there before. As long as we were alert to what God was doing and perceiving it. Lucas, did you have any other thoughts on this message part? Uh, yeah, just I when I was thinking about the doing a new thing, thinking a lot about, you know, so many I've seen churches where basically they found like at some point in history, they, they had success and things were humming and then they got scared of changing things for when things were running really well. And they basically nailed everything in place and said, let's not change this model of church because this works. Mm -hmm. And they, mm -hmm. instead of focusing on their mission, they focus on their model. They focus on how they do church instead of why they do church. And it just gets like stagnant and stuff because it's funny. There's a church I'm, I'm kind of familiar with and they've, they've been super stagnant for like a decade or so. But then I found out later on that like at one point back in like multiple decades ago, they were the happening church around. Right. And then since then things have kind of not gone well for them. Uh, but it's, and I think a lot of it's because they, you know, they, they're afraid to change. Right. And, and that does, it goes for church. that goes for people that goes for organizations. Right. If you keep trying to do things the way you always did them, uh, you're going to get diminishing returns for that over time, right? Can I ask the question? Mm -hmm. Is is the church as an organization and that kind of mentality isn't is is that a, re a representation of the individual? Because the church is a group of individuals that then collectively try to seek his seek God's will and move in a direction. So I guess my question is, mm -hmm. is you know, the situation that you that you. Uh, I, I, I don't want to sound judgmental. That's that's what I'm trying to avoid here is. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm asking? I'm not I'm not I'm a little bit. OK, now I think in this scenario it was leadership. Like I think a lot of things rise and fall on leadership. Of and of course it does. Yeah. So I guess my question is, is then. Because we look at this and we're talking about the church kind of corporately. But to yeah. me, this this the church corporately won't change unless this this happens individually that we're individually perceiving what god is doing yeah and if a church is not doing that that's indicative of individuals within the organization not doing that i guess is what i'm saying yep oh yeah yeah and i think the problem is if you give a if you have a leadership team or a pastor who's like really stifling change and really like and and make and making it about what it's not about like instead of focusing on people's relationships and growth. They're just focusing on like the event of Sunday or oh. certain ministries or whatever. Then all of a sudden, you know, the people who are interested in growth are going to get annoyed and leave. And the church is going to become a kind of a husk of its former self. And you're not going to attract new people. They're going to show up and see basically a dead or dying church and like, eh, hmm. I'll probably check out somewhere else. Right. And I think, and this is a separate conversation, but when people are talking about, oh, it's so horrible that churches are closing. I think there's some churches that should close, right? I think there are like, now I want new churches to open, but I think some churches die of, of natural causes. And I think that's fine. In fact, I think in the Baptist denomination, they should shut half the, basically like half the churches and start combining them. Cause it's like, they're trying to hold on to a system from 200 years ago when everyone had to be within, you know, 10 miles of their church because they could get there in a horse and buggy. Uh, and now mm. having a church in every corner, it's not really, I mean, it's not unfeasible, but it's, it's not, I don't know. I, yeah, but having that, having that much variety makes us, we become picky about what we like and don't like and, you know, church hop to find, to find something that meets our specific needs when, which shouldn't be why we're going in the first place. But anyway, this is, this is a broader conversation, but it's a good conversation <laughs> to have. Yeah. Um, so, okay, if we're going to avoid what we're talking about right here, I feel like my mic, something with my mic changed. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Everything's fine? Okay. If we're going to avoid what we're talking about here individually and corporately as the church, we need to start talking about obedience, which mm -hmm. is, so let's just take it for the three of us right now. We can't complain um, if we're not going to at least look inward. So, what what can the three of us do individually this week based on what we're talking about and what God's revealing? For me, I think um, talking going back, you know, to talking about, you know, seeing God as, 
you know, those like refreshing streams and seeing as like that thing you need, you know, like no one would ever set up an, a village that didn't have water near it. That'd be crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I need to start thinking about my time with God that way. Right. Like I need that, whether it's in my, my weekly life, my daily life, just my prayer life, making sure I'm constantly going back to that well for refreshment. Even if you know how sometimes you don't realize how thirsty you are until you take your first drink, same thing. Like sometimes you don't feel like you're missing that devotion until you get back into the word, that sort of thing. So yeah. I think that's, that's an area of obedience. I think I could sharpen. And there's definitely a reason why he's called living water. Right. Mm-hmm. Andrew, my, my man. Uh, for me, I think it's focus, um, figure out where I'm going, you know, what, what exactly that new thing is for me. Um, and I mean, it's not necessarily a, a new thing, but just focus in and get some direction. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually in the same, in the same place. And it's more about, um, me being my, my spirit being alert to what God is doing so that I don't miss it. And I got to remember that it's not about me. Um, Mm -hmm. right. Like it's the world does not revolve around me. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. And, and so the new thing that might spring up might not, you know, it might not, um, what be, hundred percent geared for me. It might, it might take me out of my comfort zone. In fact, it probably will to grow me. Mm-hmm. So to perceive that and, and, and honor God for what he has done, but not live in that past, live in what he's doing right now. And, and to your point, Lucas, you know, to, to remember to spend the time with him. Otherwise, if we're not spending the time with him, it's just whoosh, whoosh, life's going to go right by. Uh, so guys, we're going to go here. If you are willing to go here with me and it is to write down uh, a confession that God reveals to you in this passage. And we kind of touched on it. So I don't feel like this is a, uh, a big leap, um, for us, but write down any confession that God reveals to you in this passage. And if applicable, you can write down steps that you're kind of, you're taking to turn away from sin and walk in holiness and, oh, what just happened? There's my mouse. You, you know, for and, and I shared it, and it, you guys will see it coming. Like I've tried to, I've tried to manipulate and recreate past movements of the spirit, where man, God moved in a mighty way at this youth rally. So let's do it exactly the same way next time, <laughs> and 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 then it's it's just it's going to happen, as though there's a formula that, that I can input and get that answer every time. And I'm yet to see God move exactly the same way twice. So the confession for me is, is is that, and I would, you know, repent of, of living in that and trying to manipulate that as opposed to following what he's doing. I think it'd be really hard working in ministry when you're organizing events, whether it's like just a regular Sunday or a special worship night or whatever to find the balance between giving it structure and allowing it flexibility to kind of work with what's going on with the Holy spirit. Like that would be so hard to do, especially because I like to over plan. So I'd kind of want to have it like down to the minute. Uh, but then I'd have to find ways to like, you know, not have it in a straight jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tiffany's coming on here. I'm going to read it. Uh, because not everyone's going to get to read it. I love that comparison to water. I keep thinking that water is all around us, literally running through pipes in our house, always there, even if you aren't actively seeking it out, just like Mm -hmm. God. He's always there, always around us, even when we aren't actively seeking him out in that moment. That's important to remember. I love that. Thanks, you two. I like it. Nice. Uh, Andrew, do you want to wrap up our our, uh, repentance piece? Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I, I already touched on it, but just stop looking backwards so much. And and just like you said, start listening a little more for where I'm, I'm being led. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Barb, I see um, he gives us what he needs. He never leaves us alone. He's op- he opens our eyes so that we can help each other. I, that's, that's huge. Um, mm-hmm. We're to help each other. So prayer, spend time thanking the Lord for all his blessings and pray for anything or anyone he lays on your heart. So we'll let you all do that. But Lord, thank you that we can grow together. Uh, We're not supposed to grow alone. So thank you for this group that we get to do this with each week. All right. Well, guys, that's been our smorp. Lucas, do you think you got enough battery to do it? 
Oh, we got 11%. We're laughing. We're laughing, so let's toss to Lucas and... All right, so this is a little bit morbid, hopefully not too morbid. Oh, dude. <laughs> like... <laughs> I can just can it if you think it's too morbid. I, I mean, it's, no, I, I, no, I like it because I've actually changed my opinion on it. I had it. I thought, oh, well, my ob- answer is obviously this, but we'll see what they think. And I changed my mind. So the question is, you're in a room and inside that room, there's a, a switch or a button or whatever. <clears throat> and if you flip that switch, you will save someone's life in the world somewhere. Someone who is in danger of dying will be saved but no dogs will exist in the world. You will make all dogs go extinct. No dogs allowed. No dogs. Do you flip the switch, press the button, pull the lever? Yes. Easy. All dogs go to heaven, so that's a no-brainer. <laughs> save, a strange, <laughs> st- save a stranger's life. Uh, love has no one like this that a man flip a switch to save a stranger's life. That's right. I wouldn't flip it. Save them dogs. You'd save the dogs. You'd okay. sacrifice. Yeah. So, so you're, you're going to sacrifice a human is it a guarantee that the human will die if you don't flip that the switch? Is that one human's life worth more than every dog in the world? Do you know how much joy dogs bring to people's lives? <laughs> Tons. Oh, uh, this like is this much. And joy. yes, it will definitely save a human who is going to die. You don't know who they are. You can't look them in the eye, but there is a human out there who will be saved. Yeah, it makes it even easier. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It would be a lot harder if they were right in front of you. It's I don't like, even need to walk in that room. Dogs, though. Beep. Oh my goodness! What a question for such a time as this, because and the chat has no opinions whatsoever. We we live. Oh boy! It seems to me that we live in a, a time on this planet when an animal's life seems to have more value almost than a human's, mm-hmm. and and that animals almost have more rights than we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so depending on how we answer, we're gonna tick off one group of individuals yeah. like uh, to me it's a no-brainer that you uh you you flip the switch and i'm they just they just disappear it doesn't say that they die so yeah. i specifically worded it that way so <laughs> so yes i'm flipping the switch because as much as i love dogs and i think they're great um i, I would much rather just save do- brad hates dogs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh and cats too like to me, it wouldn't matter what it is. Uh, we're going to go after, you know, I'll leave the 99 <laughs> That's right. dogs okay, and go after so this here's one. The thing. By not flipping the switch, am I killing the person? You're not killing them. They're going to die. You are just intervening to save them at the cost of the dog. So there's no murder on the table here. No, 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 no. It's not murder. It's like... <laughs> There's a big anvil dangling over someone's head. No, it's somewhere in the world. You don't know how, you don't know who they're going to die. They're on their way there. You can intervene, but it will, there is a cost. So you just have to Ooh, decide. Okay. Barb Mattinson throwing down hard here. Uh, you would not say that. I think Andrew, if it was your kid. Yeah. But the point is it's a stranger. But that stranger <laughs> is someone's kid. We don't know that. There's no, yes, we do. <laughs> so I feel that like person I have could one, be, that person could be 104 years old. They could be just one stiff breeze away from the grave anyway. Yeah. You don't know or, that. It could be, a, it could be a newborn. Die. Could be. That's why I, I made it vague. So you do not know. I couldn't, okay, so, I could not live with myself if I didn't flip that switch. I know it'll be sad and I'll be public enemy number one. And chances are the person that lived will hate me too. <laughs> you killed all the dogs. <laughs> Cause oh, everyone's no going to hate for, them for the because they technically killed the dogs. No too. one will know for the record. No one knows. Everyone's just like, where do the dogs go? E- like, exactly. And, no and even, know. even the person that lives that guilt will eat you alive. <laughs> and it's not like I can be like, no, no, I, I, I flipped a switch and it's just, this is not lost where they push a button. Um, <laughs> spoiler. I, I, now, I, so think... I have one flip the switch, one don't flip the switch. Two. Flip... I started off as a, yeah, I'm gonna press that button because a human life is worth more than an animal life. That to me, that was the easy, that was my easy first thought. Yes. But then I was thinking, 
the joy dogs bring, but also like there's a ton of service animals and that's what got me service animals. Like all of a sudden all these blind people are just like, you know, in trouble. Right. And, and all these, you know, support dogs and all that kind of stuff. So to me, I feel like dogs save more than one life a year. Like Mm. I feel like the net benefit to humanity is there now. Oh my goodness. The reason I put cats in, in brackets is because a lot of other animals, I would flip the switch. Like if, if we lost all cats, and I don't mind cats, Seagulls. but to me, to me, I would sacrifice the cats, but not the dogs. I feel like the math is just not with us on that one. Uh, okay. Uh... <laughs> Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins will know where the dogs went. Uh, those are the writers of the Left Behind series. Oh, my um, word, Dwight. That is a deep cut. <laughs> That's fantastic. Lucas, how did you know that? Um, I grew up a Christian in the nineties. So you might as well ask, how do I know those DC talk lyrics? I mean, uh, or what does WWJD mean? I, I, I know these things. Wow. I always just, I, I will always, if someone's getting left behind for something, I'll just go, uh, they got Kirk Cameron. And well, every time I find a pile of clothes anywhere, I'm like, Oh, rapture. I missed it. And it's no one ever laughs ever. Cause it's but not funny all the time. <laughs> Someday. Wow. All right. Well, uh, so listen, Dwight, I'm, I'm curious. Um, what's your answer, Dwight? I'm, I'm super curious what you would say here. Do you flip barbs with you, Brad? I know barbs with me. And I think my She's mom's on with me no on dog. this one. She said, my mom said, I love my dog, but you flip it the switch. You flip it the switch. You flip it the switch. Go. When does a <laughs> switch it to flip? You flip it the switch. It's a spicy Mario. switch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Dwight's going to chime in on this one or um, just leave us with, with a, I guess we'll find out in guessing. 15 to 30 seconds, a classy one liner. Well, Lucas, while we're waiting to see what happens, why don't you prep your vocal cords for this? Big... Oh, kill the dogs. Kill the Lucas. dogs. Kill Lu- the... Now, listen, no one said kill. Nobody said kill. Dwight did. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight did. We ought to know Dwight, you're killing. I'm not sure. And I can respect that. All right. Well, thank you everybody. Lucas. <laughs> All right. If you'd like to talk to us about our thoughts on dogs, you can follow our podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or uh, YouTube at Oxford Holy Club. If you're using social media, throw up the hashtag OH Club. Uh, we would love a five star review. I think we're going to get five star after this dog debacle. Uh, a dog and, and we, If you leave us a five star rating, we'll even read it on the air. Wow. Not only that, but you can send your questions to us at OxfordHolyClub.com. Or uh, NAS PEI, if you want. No. Uh, browse merch as it becomes available and much more. Why would you do that? Uh, folks, don't forget that we don't pay to advertise. So any support we get comes from you sharing us with others. And don't be surprised if in the next couple of days you see a stream come up that goes on for four hours and just has pictures of dogs. Folks, <laughs> until next time, Here's you know it. Keep spiritually fit and, and have, have fun. fun.